Thank you for listening to Lone Star Community Radio. This program was broadcasted and recorded live from the LSCR studios in downtown Conroe, Texas. Lone Star Community Radio is supported by listeners like you. Donate and sponsor today. For more information on getting involved with Lone Star Community Radio, contact us at lscrstudios at gmail.com or visit us online at www.irlonestar.com. Tavares, right in the butt. What? No. Blake. This is the best. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> it, I think. Yeah. Much better answer. And experience in listener fortitude. It's the audience of one show on Conroe's 106.1 and 104.5 FM, streaming on IRLoneStar.com and available wherever you get your podcasts from. I am Andrew Riding Shotgun alongside the guy who would rather die hot than live ugly. It's Dick. Rampant is more than 51%. Schistler. Yeah. We're on the other side. Memorial Day, we're on the other side. Yeah, it was a long Memorial Day, man. Officially, unofficially summer yeah that weekend is always a test in fortitude isn't it <laughs> well it, it's a it's, test in something it's strange because i don't it, like in society we have the school zones and everything and now everyone's like kind of still in school and not in school i think everybody's out now but is everyone out I now officially so. i mean there might be some private schools that adhere slightly different but the public schools are certainly all out by now okay yeah all the public pools and neighborhood pools are Full of kids again. Like we're we were uh, driving around on Sunday, and the speed zones for school zones were on, and yeah. I was like, "What's going on?" So I, I, that brings up an interesting point. If you know for a fact there is no school because summer started, but yet the, there's a flashing school zone, I feel like you have to obey it. I no think. Do what. you still have to obey the twenty mile an hour speed zone? Well, the way I look at it is, an officer just needs an excuse That's to pull you over. Kind of what and I'm I feel thinking. like he, an officer, would pull you over it's and say, "Yeah, you, you're going through." School zone. I'm like, well, school's not on. Well, let me check your registration. I need your license. Yeah, and, uh, he said, well, the I'll, sign was still flashing. I'll let this one slide. I need to check other stuff. I'd be curious. I may want to look that up at some point. But, yeah, I've had that experience before, and it may have happened just this past week where I knew there was no school on Friday, but had to putt, 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 putt. Anyways, oh, speaking of putt, putt, putting, I did uh, travel a little bit this weekend to go see in-laws in the central part of the state of Texas, the great state of Texas. And, of course, I saw some of the... Uh, the road signs that are no longer going to be allowed. Yeah. <clears throat> with the uh, the funny sayings, I made note of this one. It said, "Keep some space. It's not a race." See, I like these. I guess they figure it's going to distract us with such high levels of comedy, but I still like them. But no more. Got what like a year left, and then it's just going to be the boring, boring signs. Well, what's weird to me about that is they're used to give people messages, right? So if there is like a silver alert or a blue alert, like mm-hmm. that's still distracting you. That's right. Like I know. You're still going to read the important information. So regardless of what it says, it's you're still going to read it. You're still going to read it. Yeah, I know. I, that's why I said I guess it's the comedy level. They're going. Oh man, we can't, we can't have this distracting people. Oh my god. I also had this experience. You know, sleeping in a different bed that's not yours is always kind of dicey or whatever. But I had this experience where I annoyed myself. Have you ever annoyed yourself? By the way. The only time is like if I constantly run into things and I'm like, golly, like what is my deal today? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm dropping things, I'm bumping into things. And that's and, annoying. Yeah. Because being annoyed is. And forgetful. Well, yeah. Like you forget your keys. Like, oh, I forgot my keys. And you grab your keys and you're going back out. Like, oh, man, I forgot my backpack. Oh, I got to go back in there. Those are pretty good examples. I think running into a doorway with your elbow. Oh, you're like, come on, man. The thing is three and a half feet wide and I can't make it through. Yeah, that is that is a good example of annoying yourself. Well, I had the. Uh, the unfortunate uh, of event of waking up at 3.30 in the morning because I had to make a little potty, right? And you do this thing where you struggle with yourself for a good 10, 15 seconds where you're going, I, nah, I don't really have to go. I can just go back to sleep. Yeah. And then the other side goes, you need to pee, dude. Just get up. And you argue with yourself mm-hmm. for longer a period of time than it would have taken if you just went to the bathroom. you know. And then I finally said, oh, just go. you know. So I go to the restroom and get back. And I've, I realized... I was having an argument with myself, and one side of me was annoying the other side of me. Yeah, <laughs> It's a very humbling and Classic. odd experience, yes. Dick, um, it's really extremely toasty in this I know, man. <laughs> uh, uh, studio at the moment. Holy expletive. Yeah. 
it is hot in here, bud. Like, I don't think the air conditioning Like, I literally want to text on. the rest of the shows because I'm supposed to be here till like, Holy 8 cow. o'clock today. I'm like, I don't know if I could sit in this room. It's like a sauna in here, man. Yeah. Yeah, this is... Yeah, I don't know that you can sit here all day. This is yeah. this is pretty bad. Um, had I known, maybe I would have brought a fan, but I, I guess the fan would have made noise into the microphones, which is probably not great radio. Anywho, so I got to see my nephew for the very first time. The one that gave, yeah. that, that allowed me to wear the shirt from last week about being the, the favorite uncle. I got to see him for the first time. Cute kid. But it got me to thinking about babies in general and the whole baby making process. But not that part of the process, man. I'm talking about like the gestation period. There's been like estimates of 110 to 120 billion people have been born on this planet. I do find it kind of strange that we don't see more pregnant ladies walking around. I do. You, what are you doing? Where are you We're at? hanging out at bars, dude. Oh, that's true. That's, that's true. true. The pregnant ladies are always at the bar. No, no. I love all the pregnant ladies are at breweries. Are they now? Yeah. It's weird. Like, I always see at least two or three women Okay. Pregnant. Well, your experience is definitely different from mine because I just don't see pregnant women very often. And with as many babies that are born, and I have Everyone's some stats. Everyone's fat, too. And well, yeah, you can't, you can't tell, I suppose. No, it's just, it, I just thought that I would see more pregnant ladies around. And I guess what it is, is we see women that are pregnant, but they're so early on, maybe you can't tell. And by the time they get large and they're showing, they go off to, like, Pregnancy Island somewhere. And you just don't see them because they don't want to be out, I'm guessing. I don't know. Well, at one, per- at one point in the pregnancy, it looks real extreme. You're like, oh my God, you're Towards huge. the end, I think, yeah. yeah. Like, you're huge. I don't know, I just, I don't see very And women don't like being called huge. No, they, yeah, they really don't. Well, I'm glad that you get to see pregnant women all the time. Well, the UN estimates Our that around- the grocery store. I, well, that's where I go, bro. But you I do to go, go at once a, a week, time. at least. You gotta go at a certain the time. The pregnancy time? The yeah, pregnancy, pregnancy hour. Time. Yeah, we always- Thursdays in We between always had the, in Houston, we always had the time down- at the local H E B because like I think it was like Mondays and Tuesdays were old people days. Okay. And then like hot chick day was like Thursday, Friday. <laughs> Is this unofficial or actually like, like advertised on the No, sign? it's just the way we notice every time we go, it's like, yeah, there's a lot of like younger women wearing yoga pants today. And I was like, it's probably like the weekend is, is the moms and single dads or yeah. something. Right? Okay. And then like the Saturday because I always went on Saturday mornings. Uh huh. Because I was like no one would be there and was that the, the young twink hour or what? Yeah, that's the nobody hour. Oh, okay. I wasn't quite sure what no. you were what you were referring to. Well, the UN estimates that around 385,000 babies are born each day around the world. That is crazy, and that's about um, 4.5 births every second. That's a ton of kids, man. A ton of kids. And again, with that many babies being born, 4.5 babies every second you just, I figured there'd be a lot more pregnant women out there walking around. I would just not. check out, a, go to Houston more. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right. All right. Well, I also, in a somewhat related um, link here, the largest countries by population. Dick, I'm going to give you a little quiz here. The first two are probably fairly obvious, but do you know what the most populous country is in the world? India. That is correct. I'm looking at the sheet. I'm cheating. Oh, Okay. You well, shouldn't have put the link in there. I probably shouldn't, but the link was for me because I wouldn't remember it. Yes, number one, India, 1.4 billion. China, 1.425 billion, just right behind them. But the third one I thought was a little interesting. The good old USA. We are the third largest country by population in the world. Now, granted, we've only got, as this shows, 341 million. That is about a third or a fourth of the size of those other two. But America, the third. Would you have guessed that? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why I was thinking we were somewhere down fifth or sixth. I don't know what other countries I thought would be more populous. Maybe Russia or something like that. But Russia, well behind us. They have like half the amount of people we do. Yeah, Russia also, it's so big, but you can't live most of right. Russia. It's, so. Yeah, it's just I so think barren. Pa- I think cold. Pakistan is kind of shocking. Indonesia, fourth. Pakistan, fifth. Nigeria, sixth. Brazil, seventh. Bangladesh, eighth. Russia, ninth. And Mexico bringing in the top ten. Because I think, well, what's crazy is you look at it like this. Yes. Pakistan has 244,000, and uh-huh. I think Pakistan is just a little bit bigger than Texas. Right, right. It, and, and we do are, we do are. That's that's some good broadcasting. We do have a lot of land mass here in the United States. We are a large country, but I guess I just thought there were some that were bigger. And then, nope, it's only India and China. 
Well, it says the current world population is growing by about 215,000 people every single day. I guess that's when you take out all the deaths. And it is projected to hit 8 billion by 2023, which we're already there, and I think we're at like 8.1 billion right now, 9 billion by 2037, and 10 billion by 2057. That's a lot of people getting it on, Dick. That's a lot of people getting it on. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun to get, yes, it's fun to make babies, isn't it? Yeah. Well, part of it is, anyways. And, yeah, I'm really good at it. <laughs> It's kind of my thing. It's kind of my thing. Kind of my thing. All right, man. Well, let's go ahead and kick off the show. Oh, yes. I needed that. Did you just make a baby? (laughs) It kind of looked that way, didn't it? A little creepo. I like it. (laughs) Well, did you hear the news that everyone's favorite competitive eater, Kobayashi, is retiring? He's never eating again? Well, no, he's never going to eat competitively. Yeah. And you remember we've talked about Kobayashi before. He was the uh, the one that kind of brought competitive eating to the forefront 20-some-odd years ago. And uh, he was the one that uh, started the trend of dunking the hot dog buns yeah. in water. Pioneer, man. Pioneer he was a pioneer. Well, he has announced he is retiring, and he states he's wondered what damage he may have done to his body. And he estimates well, let's that... let's wonder that. Well, yeah, over, over the number of years, he's worried about the damage that he's done to his body. It says, the 46-year-old from Japan believes he's eaten 10,000 hot dogs in his career, Dick. That is a lot of wieners that man has had in his yeah. mouth. That's a lo- he's had a lot of wieners in his mouth. But he hopes, t- hopes to fix his brain and his... Do you think he's ever going to miss it? ...and his gut. No, I don't think like so. Like every retired athlete, pro right. athlete, they're like, oh, man. Yeah, I miss the feeling yeah. of being so full I have to take a dump. <laughs> Well, you're right. He probably will miss the competition because guys that are at the top of their game, no matter what it is, they tend to get off on that that competition. And you're right. If that's think, missing, uh, he may do something else. I forgot who the guy was. We're watching the interview with it's like the Rich Eisen show or something. Uh-huh. And he's a competitive eater. And he got he asked like a fair question. He's like, what do you do about the bathroom? And he's like, well, actually, usually when the event is done, the event's done. Like they we don't hang out. Right. So I just they go, want you to leave. They want you to leave. <laughs> so reason. and he goes, he was like the worst I ever had was like in New York. He was doing like a pizza contest or something, mm-hmm. and he's like just walking home, and he had to use the restroom, and he tried to mm. use the one in Starbucks, but they said he had to buy something, and he was like, I don't think you understand. I have eaten like five pounds of pizza. Right. And he like bought coffee or like bottled water or something, oh. and he's like, yeah, you just don't. We don't. Well, really. it was worth it. Yeah. Worth every cent on that water. Well, he says, since he has eaten too much, he has lost the ability to fully taste, savor, and smell food. He says his body also now ignores signals like fullness. <laughs> and I guess that makes sense after you've just really destroyed it. But one of the interesting notes here is that he thinks that he has done damage to his brain and his nervous system through all the uh, massive amounts of processed foods that he's eaten uh, saying that he's got a lot of brain fog and, and, and issues with concentration, and he's wondering that this eating this types of food has done damage. And it makes me wonder if there's going to be some kind of studies, like you know, in the NFL, they, they have CTE studies to, to determine the, uh, the effect of that sport on human brain. It makes me wonder if somebody's going to start to study what this food has done to competitive eaters' brains. And if it comes out that there's some kind of... Uh, Oh, I don't know, negative effect. Are they going to change it to like steamed broccoli instead of uh, instead of hot dogs? And they're gonna, well, you're going to have to eat this asparagus well, I feel like dish. that stuff already exists. I've never heard of anybody chugging down 10 pounds of steamed broccoli. Can you imagine the broccoli we, we, farts we, after we've that? We've seen like lemon juice. Yeah, but that's, I don't think that's quite the same. Lemon juice, I mean, that is nasty, but that's not really a food. Is there really lemon juice drinking competitions? Mm-hmm. To see and it's can... more speed than quantity. It's like oh, who did the fa- okay, There's an official sense. like a quart or something like that, and they have to drink a quart and under X Y Z. Mm, okay, well, but even then, I think that could probably do massive damage to your esophagus and oh, probably yeah. your tongue because it's so acidic. I would assume. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> I just wonder. It makes me makes me wonder if they're going to change some of the rules and some of the food that is allowed during these. Competitions. Well, I always wondered, especially like if you're a competitive eater. Along the lines of like what what's considered practice, and then what's considered your day to day normal mm-hmm. eating habit. Mm-hmm. Because like if you're in season, I imagine every other meal has to be a competitive style meal. Just Where to like, stay in form. Well, because you got to keep your stomach in the like in the process. Like okay, you're going to be consuming a lot of food. 
So Well, he says that he trained with water. That was his strategy so that he didn't always have to eat food to keep his stomach stretched. He would just consume large amounts of water. Okay. So I guess that's one technique. And I bet you that's one technique that a lot of the competitive eaters employ. So I know you're pretty disappointed. I'm not going to get to see him anymore. I don't think I've ever. Although I don't really he hasn't like, really been competing. Yeah, really, yeah, he's anyways. been kicked out. Yeah, I know. So. Which we've talked about before as well. I, what's funny to me about this kind of stuff is this doesn't seem appealing at all to watch. No, I can't watch it. I think we've talked about that too. No. I cannot watch any of that, man. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. So have you heard about the one, or I'm sorry, the 10,000 year clock that is being constructed currently? This is pretty wild, but apparently it's the brainchild of inventor Danny Hillis, who dreamed up the idea in 1986 as a way to encourage people to think about humanity's distant future. So he's thinking about your future. But basically what this is, it's a massive clock that's being funded by Jeff Bezos, who's put, I think, $43 million to date uh, to help build and uh, fund this thing. They're building this clock uh, along with San Francisco-based now long foundation long, oh, long now foundation that is a weird name but basically the idea here is to build a clock that will last 10,000 years and instead of having a second hand that ticks every second it has a century hand that ticks every 100 years and then after every thousand years it has a cuckoo or a chime how are they going to test this by the way <laughs> And can you imagine waiting all of these years for this big moment for it to do its first big cuckoo in a thousand years and nothing happens because somebody forgot to wind it, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, Bezos is going to be a robot, so he's, he'll be around. He'll, he'll be there? Yeah, he'll be the one winding it. I think it's kind of interesting, though. It says the, uh, the clock will be driven by giant gears within a shaft inside of a mountain. Apparently, this mountain is here in Texas. And powered by thermal energy harvested from the changes in temperature. I think it probably harvest some right now in this studio, associated associated with the day and night cycle on the mountain above. Wow, what will they think of next? Kind of interesting, though. Are you interested in seeing this clock? Well, I imagine gonna, in the meantime it'll be, be around. <laughs> well, I mean, I think you could probably view it as it just sits. I know, but like for, to be there for the first century. No, no. Well, maybe they're, they're going to do the first tick to start it off. That would be a big event. Yay. There's no estimated time for completion at this point, but uh, yeah, otherwise you're just looking at a clock that's not moving because it ticks every 100 years. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's season. I need to find out where it's at. Da, 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 da. Deep in the heart of the Sierra Diablo Mountains along the Texas-Mexico border is a 500-foot tall clock. There it goes. Woo. Interesting, man. Yeah, I just, I just can't help but think that you're going to spend all this money you can't really test that it actually works. There's this little poof of smoke comes out. It makes no no noise. You see one guy slink off. Crap. Forgot, well, well, forgot to wind it. No one forgot. They would forget to record it. They're like, oh, man, we missed it. We fell asleep. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Pretty interesting, though. I, there's a picture of it in that link I sent you. I think, honestly, as just a design, it is pretty aesthetically uh, pleasing. But, uh, yeah, interesting. Interesting. I hadn't, I hadn't seen that until, or I hadn't heard about it until I saw this article, which is... Pretty cool, man. Oh my god, it's hard to think. It's I know, so dude. Freaking I'm, I'm falling asleep. <laughs> yeah, well, don't do that. D- do you remember the Crystal Pepsi craze? Yeah, it's funny you you sent that to me because yeah, I was sitting there going, I don't really remember <laughs> the clear phase, uh huh, for drinks. So I didn't really understand why this they made Crystal Pepsi. <clears throat> Right, so you probably just remember Crystal Pepsi. I remember Crystal Pepsi, but when you read in the article, it's like, oh, they were trying to cash in on the, the current phase. That is correct, for, yeah. Like in the 90s, of everything was clear. Yeah, I'm so like, I don't really remember that, but... Well, I think because Crystal Pepsi was probably the one product that got the most attention. Um, did, you, did you ever try it? Do you remember trying nah. it? I did try it. I don't know if I conned my parents into getting me some or if I tried it at a friend's house. And I don't remember it being particularly good or bad. Um, but I do remember it having a different taste than the original Crystal Pepsi. And I think that's what went wrong is they touted it as being exactly the same f- taste. And, of course, it's not going to be. Once you take out the caramel coloring and whatnot, it's going to be really hard to match that back up. They should have just made it a separate product altogether, not worry about trying to uh, uh, make it taste the same. But, yeah, it, in the late 80s and early 90s, apparently there was this explosion in items being marketed as pure or clear. 
and the clear craze of the day uh, caused countless companies to embrace the fad, including the introduction of clear alcoholic beverages, Zima. I know you cleared back a bunch of Zimas in your day. And the relentless touting of ivory soap as 99 and 44 one hundredths pure. But I, what I didn't uh, know is there was a, an oil company, Amoco Oil, tried to get in on the trend and made a clear oil. <laughs> Everything was supposed to be clear and pure. And of course, I think they got sued because their claims of this being a pure oil was not actually the case. All right. It's it like clean nothing. coal. All coal is clean. I don't know what you mean. Yeah, no, I, I thought it was interesting. But what's really, really cool is, and I don't know if I remember this, but this was an accompanying uh, story with this, is Pepsi in the 90s did one of these um, Pepsi point programs. And you could either buy Pepsi products to get points, or you could literally just buy Pepsi points for different different uh, items. Like, you know, remember like the Marlboro points where you get like the backpack and the hat and the shirt that, that has the, the product on it? Pepsi did this. Well, <clears throat> Justin Leonard, or I'm sorry, John Leonard, Justin Leonard's a golfer, um, in 1996 um, was on a mission to try and set out to get the ultimate prize. And this was a fighter jet. Because at the end of one of the commercials where Pepsi was advertising, they advertised a jet. Yeah, I remember this. You do? Yeah, I watched the movie. Yeah, so it, it is a Netflix documentary, uh, Pepsi, good. Where's My Jet? It's pretty interesting. So basically what happened was there was a promotion on TV, like I said, that claimed that you could win a jet uh, for 7 million points. Okay, and that, that it was a Harrier jet. And what's interesting about it is the jet was actually $23 million. So one ingenious little kid started putting pencil to paper and said, well, I can't buy enough products, but if I just buy outright the amount of, of Pepsi points, I can get this jet for about $700,000. Mm -hmm. So he apparently, he was a 20-year-old college student at the time, um, realized it would be, like I said, prohibitive to buy at the store, so he bought the, the uh, products or the points. And he apparently had a millionaire friend, Todd Hoffman, whom he encountered on a mountaineering trip. I think there's a documentary about how he encountered a millionaire friend on a mountaineering trip, <laughs> just going to say. But he convinced him to go ahead and uh, have him purchase the tickets for this this um, this jet, and eventually they confronted Pepsi, and Pepsi said, "No, nope," because the advertisement, even though it did not have a disclaimer in it, and they watched it many, many a time, they said, "Yeah, I, I mean, this the, the look they're saying that you can get this jet, even though it didn't have a disclaimer." Pepsi, I guess the lawyer said, "Look, this is not realistic. No one actually thought you you could get a, a fighter jet. Come on, so." They were out seven hundred thousand dollars. Kind of reminds me of that one movie. I'm trying to think. Uh, Punch Drunk Love. Kind of the same concept where you realize that the value that what they were offering on the points was worth way more than oh, the product yeah. you get. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. I forgot what happened at the end of that story with the Pepsi guy because it was like a long story. It went through courts. It yeah, went this article is fairly long too. And somehow I think it was like the judge basically said the. Shame on you, Pepsi, but you don't owe them a jet. Right. It said the tongue-in-cheek attitude of the commercial would not cause a reasonable person to conclude that a soft drink company would be giving away fighter jets as part of its promotion. Well, because they even had this really shady deal where he was talking about the points and the way you redeem points is, is totally separate. Like, it's not like a website. There wasn't like a website or anything like that. So it was probably it, back before the WW yeah, was really so what it, it is like now. Like, what it was, was like there's like a booklet, and in the booklet, it didn't have the fighter jet. Uh, so like you open the booklet and you select you what you actually want. would purchase. Yeah. yeah, and so that was the argument was like, well, the only way to order is what it's, it says what's in the booklet. And since they didn't put the fighter jet in the booklet, they're not. Bro, where's my jet though, man? Yeah, would have been pretty cool. I mean, what do you do with it once you get it? It's like a dog chasing a car. You got the. I guess it's just the fact that you could then resell it, maybe because you got a twenty-three million dollar jet for seven hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I don't know. I do like the idea of having that kind of money though. Well, you have to make uh, uh, friends with a millionaire on a mountaineering yeah. trip. <clears throat> He's a, it's, you should watch the show. That guy's really weird. Which one? The millionaire. Oh, uh, I like, bet. Because it's one of those guys you go, did, you, did he like develop some cool QVC device that he made a lot of money? Yeah. How did he make his money and why like, is he on a mountaineering trip with a 20-year-old? What's going on? Oh, because the 20-year-old's 20 20 like a, what do you call it, an extremist. 
Mm, mm-hmm. Like he does the hang gliding and all that stuff. Right. And so there's always a group of people that do that stuff. And I think this guy was part of the group. Ah, that makes more sense than where I was going. Yeah, it wasn't like a young man trip. I thought there was some grooming involved in yeah. there. I don't know. It just seemed a little yeah. seemed a little strange. But uh, okay, maybe I'll have to check it out. It's called Pepsi. Where's my jet? Well, in a, in a related story, beverage company Liquid Death is also giving away an actual jet called the Dehydrator, because of course it is, as part of a promotion project as well. Now, this is like a used fighter jet. I don't think it's, this is, they're actually going to do it. Like, they've actually um, obtained this jet. It was used for training. It has, uh, I think it has like 400 um, hours of practice on it or something like that. And they've obtained it and they're going to actually give it away, which again, I don't know what you're going to do with it, but yeah, they've got the same, same type thing where they've got a, uh, a game going on where you get points and whatnot. The Dehydrator is an L-39 aerojet and can fly almost 470 miles per hour with nearly 3,800 pounds of thrust. How many pounds of thrust do you have, Nick? (laughs) Well, they they named it because that's how fast you can go to relieve your body fluids. What? That's why they named it. Hold on. There's a speed at which you relieve your... You so we named the jet the dehydrator because with a top speed of over 470 miles an hour and nearly 3,800 pounds of thrust, going for a ride in this thing will relieve you of your bodily f- fluids. <laughs> Just what I need. I guess if you're um, feeling a little backed well, up, when you get in the dehydrator no, and when, give it the gas, and there you're it comes. having an argument with yourself. Yeah, you're annoyed. What? Yeah, like I can't... I just, I just go. Just go. We'll just get in the jet and go. <laughs> just get in the jet, and I will go. But yeah, I guess it's this point program. I wish I knew the name of the point program. I don't know. I'm sure it's called something really creative, but giving away a retire. And this, I have to admit, this doesn't look like a fighter jet. Each stick of death dust, a powder that mixes with water that contains vitamins, electrolytes, also counts as an entry. Ah, uh, there you go. It says, yeah, the, co- the contest will also include a year's supply of liquid death to, quote, rehydrate you after you puke and pee your pants. A liquid death flight helmet to protect your skull while you pull G's and a cockpit cup holder for extra liquid death refreshment. You know liquid death is water. Yes. And I never knew that. I didn't know what it was the first time I saw it. I saw it in the airport uh, one of these times I was I flying. thought it was alcohol. And when I every time that? I saw people with it, I go, man, people are just getting crazy right now. Like. Just grab a liquid death. They really did a great advertising on this yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I thought it was like a hard seltzer or something, maybe. Yeah. No, it's just water. It's just water. It's just water. Well, I think the show needs to go out and get it, itself a new fighter jet for advertising. All right, man, this is probably a pretty good time to take a break. When we come back, we're going to have an update on our favorite billionaire, Brian Johnson. Dick, I think we need to talk about something that's um, really important. Uh, is this an intervention? No, that's next. No, I think we need to talk about um, sponsoring and donating to the show. It's something that I, I feel very close to, and I think I think it's good for you. I think it's important that we tell our listeners that they can donate and sponsor. Very, very true. Do yeah. You, do you like dog food? Yes. Oh, well, that's good, because without those sponsors, sponsorships and donations... Dog food may be what you're eating. Okay. Don't let Dick eat dog food. Like, follow, subscribe, donate. Yeah. Audience of one. Audience of one. Audience of one. Show. At gmail.com. Yeah. All right, I made sure the camera was on that time. Nice. Nice. So you're listening to Audience of One here on Lone Star Community Radio, IRLoneStar.com, in the middle of summer, in the middle of no AC. Feels like summer. Now. And it is a scorching 90-something degrees today. You know, it's crazy. I don't think the onesies realize how hard it is to actually do the show right now. I'm, I'm sitting in a big old pile of soup of my own making. Yeah. And uh, without getting too descriptive. And uh, it is, it's, it's like hard to uh, concentrate. It's, it's funny. Kind of, it, like you're sweating. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. My, the back of my shirt. You're sweating. Yeah. I can see it. I can see it on I you, can too. See it. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. But so we're going to we're gonna persevere onesies to bring you more magic. By the way, this second half of the show is up for sale. That's right. If you'd like to yeah. donate and sponsor to the audience of one show, join in on this madness. This segment is going to be brought to you by you or could be brought to you by you. 
Yeah, it'd be great if you sponsored and gave us ice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ice. There you go. I could just sit in ice. Uh, man, it's. It is hard. That's the one thing that's unfortunate where the studio is, is the fact that when everything gets affected, like, it is downhill, and we don't know when it'll be back. Because this building's huge. It used to be a bank. Right, it and is large, yeah. So I imagine the AC is broken, and they didn't fix it over the weekend. Because every, You know what's so weird about Memorial Day to me? Is there supposed to be a veteran-oriented holiday? Uh, well, to a degree. I mean, it's about the people who have passed in the yeah. line of duty. And Veterans Day is for veterans. Well, no, yes. I'm, okay, you know what I meant. Yes. But basically, nobody celebrates that except like if you had a person who served. Like we went, I went to the VFW, and I did my service by watching them play poker. So, uh, <laughs> look at you. They're a lot of fun. It uh, is an odd holiday to quote celebrate. Yeah, you know, I mean, you're not supposed to celebrate. You're not supposed it. to. You're, you're supposed, supposed to observe to, it. You're supposed to um, very respectfully crack open that beer. Very respectfully slam it. Be be a very respectful and humble drunk. <laughs> there is, was, there was weird. There was a freedom funnel. So I'm sorry. What? A freedom funnel. A freedom funnel. Is this a you is know, this is this an item to allow you to consume alcohol beverages at a rapid rate? Yeah, you never seen this? No, uh, no Dick, I haven't seen a freedom funnel. <laughs> it's a patriotic eagle dog. Let freedom flow. Here, I'll pull it up for you. Yes, please. Oh, you sent me a picture of yeah. that. I didn't know that was a funnel, though. I thought it was just a little picture of a bird. Yeah. Look Whoa. At, look at this guy. He's, yeah, he's going for he's it. He's got freedom all over yeah, him. Yeah, let freedom ring on that. Well, for those of you who can't see what we're looking at, it's uh, basically a guy who's surfing while wearing a very patriotic shirt and yeah. funneling a what we can only imagine is a beer out of what appears to be the rear end of an American bald eagle. <laughs> I guess you put it in the beak and, yep, yep, there you go. You Are you showing the onesies this? Yeah. This <laughs> This is I'm great. About, I'm talking about freedom. You, oh my God! And you, did you uh, imbibe from one of, from the back end of a bald eagle this weekend? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty awesome. I did that. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, nothing says uh, we appreciate our fallen soldiers yeah. and comrades by drinking out of the rear end of a it bald happens. eagle. It happens. Yeah. Well, we have a little bit of listener feedback. If you remember, probably, gosh, a year ago now. Yeah, audience one show at gmail.com. That's exactly right. We had our um, good show friend, John Skeels, um, who wrote the intro music to our show, give us the the new, or maybe not new, but maybe creative way of eating a pancake from the inside out. Well, he says he observed someone eating a pancake a little bit in an, uh, in, in a little bit unusual way, and that would be by tearing off little pieces with their hands of the pancake stack, dipping it into the syrup, and then consuming yeah. it. And he said, no way, man, no way. And I thought, actually, I like it. I think this makes a lot of sense. And I think it makes a lot of sense for a lot of foods that you dip into a sauce. I think it makes, makes it a nice, neat, little, tidy process, don't you think? I've never done it with pancakes, but I think I might try that. John Skills, you are wrong. This I, is I usually do way. pigs in a blanket. Yeah, would you tear off a little piece, though? No, I would put the sausage in the middle and wrap it up. Yeah, but this is, I think the, the, the idea here is you're I, tearing off pieces no, of the food no matter what I it wouldn't. is. I have seen somebody eat a hamburger like that, where they pull the pieces of the hamburger off, and I think it was because they didn't want to try and cram the huge burger into their mouth and look ridiculous in public. No, you got to do that. You've got to eat a hamburger the right way. But I think if it's something that, uh, that you're dipping, like pancakes or... Um, Let's see. What else do you dip, Dick? What else do you dip? Well, you got all the dips. All the dips. The French dip. Yeah. The French dip is kind of an extreme sandwich, I feel like. Yes. It's almost like a competitive eating sandwich because you soak it and then you just it just goes to your mouth and it goes down. Yeah. No, you're kind of right. It is. Yeah. It was the precursor for the uh, hot dog in the water. I suppose you're right. Maybe. I'm starting to rethink now. I like queso so good. Because I, I dip like... Um, egg rolls into sauce, but I wouldn't pull an egg roll apart. My theory is quickly unraveling here. Maybe it's just selective foods, but I'm okay with it on pancakes. So John Skeels, you got to give that guy a break. Dick, do you remember the Star Registry when that was a big deal and there were commercials for the Star Registry? And the concept here is you could name a star after someone. Oh, I thought you were talking about the star thing with uh, your driver's license. No, I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, you have to register. Yeah, but it's, that's just registering your license? I, I guess yeah. that's the name given to it. A star. Okay. 
I, I, I guess, it, isn't that just a, an, an emblem on the license plate no, or a I, license? I think what it is supposed to be something with the TSA. Mm. So it's like, because I guess so many people just didn't weren't qualified with their, like they didn't know certain things with certain states with their driver's license, didn't have a lot of information. So if you got the star, you could uh, skip certain things. it was things. like a combo. Yeah. I'm going to have to look into that. Because I remember I accidentally did it. <laughs> okay. And they're like, oh, you, wanted your, you want your star registry? And I'm like, well, okay. And then... No, I'm talking about naming a celestial body yeah. after some somebody. Have, have you not heard of this before? And it was really big, it seemed like, in the 1990s, maybe early th- uh, 2000s, for you to name a star as uh, after someone as like a gift. And so they open up this gift, and it's like, oh, look, I've named this star after you. It's the Star of Dick, which would like <laughs> be weird. But apparently it's been around since 1979. It is, I, th- I think this is a very you kind of gift because i think if if you think about it you're not really giving them anything (laughs) but you get credit for having given a gift but when you think about it you're not really giving them anything i mean come on how many stars could there possibly be how many stars are space even real (laughs) is space even real no but i went to their website they still have an active site here and i'm not entirely sure why but apparently they've got pictures of uh the, the Queen, Prince William, Kate, and Middleton's star, so they have a star named after them. But is it just their star? Can no one else have that exact star? I don't know how it works. Anyways, I think this is something you need to look into as someone who might be courting ladies and will be expecting a gift. You can give the gift of nothing, which is a star registry. Well, that's how I remember their names. <laughs> that's great. Did- every, every conquest, I give them a star, so I know... I can count. Look up at the sky. I, I look at the sky and be like, man, I do a good job. That's the star Dick, and then right over there is the star Tracy. Yeah, it's Tracy. Oh, there's Jacqueline up there. The one that's really far. Susan. Angela, Pamela, Sandra, and Rita. Yeah. Look at that. Diamond. Diamond? Yeah. What's your ring girl? We're, we're, yeah, we're doing stripper, stripper names. Stripper names, yeah. Oh, my gosh, we're going off the rails here. Have you heard of this not really new phenomenon, but it's kind of popped back up, this concept of subway surfing? And this is where young men, mostly young men, teens, preteens even, will get up on the top of a subway car and run across it as it is flying in full motion. Well, I've heard of it where, like, that that was a way to not pay. Uh, yeah, no, these, these people pay. They get into the car, and then I think they quickly exit and then get up on it and try to surf on it, which is a pretty cool idea except for the fact that it's extremely dangerous and i i blame movies Is it? yeah you know yeah there's a slim of course you've got to put it on insta or your tiktok reel of showing you know how cool you are and on top of of a train as it's moving um but i blame the movies it seems like every movie that you see whether or not it's an action flick or even a kid's flick has somebody riding on top of a train at some point even yeah. the polar express they ended up on top of that damn train well a 14 year old boy was lucky because he survived being struck by a train while subway surfing in Queens on Friday. The the team was struck by a train around 10.35 a.m. at the blah, 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 no one cares, but he was trying to be cool and subway surf. I've heard stories of people getting decapitated as they stand up, not realizing that there is a, uh, a support beam that's a little lower, off with their head. I've heard of folks uh, falling in between carts and then having various parts of their body removed as the train runs right smooth over them but i'd like to think that if i were a 12 year old boy now i would be smart enough to not do this but i don't know if that i actually would because it does seem like ah how hard could that be well apparently it's extremely dangerous but i do think this is one of these things that's sort of self-correcting because i think eventually when these guys either get hurt or dead and (laughs) there's no more people left to actually do this what say you bud I mean, I think go for it, dog. You want to try it? You want to yeah, subway surf? I want to sell T-shirts. Dick the subway surfer. Yeah. You could have oh man, you could have so many innuendos, double entendres for that too. <laughs> subway entering and exiting. Don't lose but your I head. Digress. Yeah, don't lose your head. <laughs> I like it. I do too. All right, as teased, an update on our favorite billionaire and everyone's favorite billionaire, Brian Johnson. You know, we talked about him, I think, on our very first show or maybe our second show. This is the guy who has entirely too much money and is trying to live forever, right? By doing various things. And then, of course, he needs more attention, so then he starts doing various uh, procedures to his genitals to ensure that he has performance of an 18-year-old. He's trying to basically reverse his metabolic age. It's pretty interesting. Well, he is back in the news 
yet again. And he is proposing his own nation state, Don't Die, where pizza, donuts, and alcohol will be illegal. (laughs) Yeah, this sounds like something you would do. Brian Johnson's daring proposal to establish a nation state dedicated to radical life extension known as the Don't Die Nation has sparked debate and controversy on the internet, you think? Unbelievable. He uh, has uh, made news as his own biohacker for his unconventional anti-aging practices like blood swapping with his own teenage son. Unveiled this audacious vision at the Live Long Summit in West Palm Beach. I don't know if you're showing the picture of there of him in the onesies. Man, is it just me or does he look younger than when we did the story last year on him? He looks like AI. He, you know what? You're right. He yeah. does look fake. He looks fake. Donning his Don't Die t-shirt. Johnson's vision of crafting a sovereign utopia devoid of junk food and alcohol while granting citizens access to advanced longevity treatments has faced harsh backlash from online commentators. Yeah, I would think so, but basically you can't have booze, you can't have donuts, and apparently you can't lie. There's something in there I read about not being able to lie about something. Or maybe it was just don't die. So what say you? Would you like to join this guy's nation state? It sounds awfully cultish to me. Oh, By the way, we're, we're, we're all in a cult, dog. I don't know about that. Yeah. Well, it says, according to Johnson, the nation state would pool its citizens, quote, citizens, resources to provide access to cutting edge tests, therapies, supplements aimed at de-aging the human body. I mean, you can do all of this now. I just don't think you need to be part of this little weird cult. I bet it costs a lot of money. It might be, but he says no single government in the world is currently focused on preventing its citizens from dying. Well, yeah, you think? Because it's kind of not something they need to be focusing on. If you think about it, we're all going to die at some point. I don't know that I need my government focusing on it. Therefore, I aim to construct real-life infrastructure to enable a government to actively support its citizens in avoiding death. Oh, my God. Sounds terrible. I'm going to put that on places to not visit. I mean, typically when you go on vacations, you're looking to eat donuts. You're looking to drink a lot of alcohol. Yeah. Maybe do a little lying, too. But no. No, this is not. This is not for me. Okay. (laughs) No, nothing? You don't got anything on it? Well, I mean, it's something that if you want to do it, do it, dude. I'm not going to control your life. I know. I just think it's weird that he's trying to start his own nation state. Again, I think he's... No, this is very part of the course for someone like this. Yeah, this is... You're right. This is probably normal behavior for someone who's trying to endeavor on this anyways. Because he's going to go up there on stage like, look at me. I have de-aged 20 years. Look at my 18-year-old And I've only had to kill 13 babies. Blood swapped with each one of them. Yeah. I drained all the babies' blood. I guess he would be... But don't drink alcohol. Would he be like the, the prime minister, I guess, just by default? Oh, man. Be number one donor, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. And that's, why you run, it, that's why you run a cult, right, to be the number one donor? Ab- absolutely. I know this is one of your lifelong goals. Yeah. He'd probably do it on, on some, like, Epstein Island, too, I have a feeling. It's not going to be like Why has it always got to be an Epstein Island? Well, it's just the name. The guy gave Ireland's you know, bad rap. He really kind of has. So it's like, why can't I just have an island? It used to be cool. Judged? If you were a billionaire, you'd be like, yeah, I got my own island. Yeah. Now it's like, oh, really? You have your own island, do you? Yeah, you're right. Epstein did ruin islands. <laughs> oh, man. I need to own an island. I really do. We talked about nude cruises last week or the week before. I'm not entirely sure. But apparently um, there are nude resorts as... Yeah. Yeah, we talked about. They're, they've been around for a while. But I thought this was funny. Uh, a woman... I, it's probably off the, the, uh, the back of that last article. But a woman decided to post her rules for her own nude resort that she runs. A British woman who relocated to, I'm not going to say the name of this city in Spain, uh, to a beach retreat for nudists, says there's several boorish behaviors that guarantee guests will get booted by their backsides. Their bare backsides. I love how some of these articles are written. Carrie Jane 57 says that most clothing-averse vacationers are impeccably well-behaved, but some of them are not, and uh, some of their behavior will not be tolerated. It says, first of all, for instance, pervs who obviously display their uh, signs of excitement, let's put it that way, uh, males, will face stiff punishment by being escorted off the premises. Again, this article is written hilarious. I like it. It says, if you see someone with this affliction and is purposely drawing attention to it, (laughs) look at this, guys. Hey, look at this. Look, look. 
let a lifeguard or authorities know about this. And in most cases, they will be kicked out or banned from coming back. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, it says, uh, da, 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 those who uh, accidentally <clears throat> engorge may not be punished. So as long as they cover up and are subtle about their activities. <laughs> So if it happens accidentally, Dick, because you, you mentioned this, of walking around, what are you going to do? Wouldn't this be so embarrassing? Well, apparently, if, if it's not done on purpose, can you imagine going to trial trying to defend yourself about a purposeful <laughs> erection or not purposeful? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> Again, you're hanging out with weirdos already. Because so. I can get the whole nudity thing, but doing it in a colony, I just don't get that. Yeah, I mean, my own, I guess my own bathroom is my own nudist colony. You know, you don't talk, you don't talk about those? Like, say you do like doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, I get it. That's why you buy a house with acres or whatever, so you can be naked outside. But then when you join a colony, you're just, that's just another level of, like... It's like the Live Long Colony. He needs to combine these two. The Live Long Nude Colony. Yeah. That's what it is. Brian Johnson's Nude I'll Live Long I'll tell Brian, colony. though, like, you're not touching my private stock. Oh, that's part of the rules, though. Yeah. I think he has to. He has to. He, he has, has to, to de-age me. Right, with his blessing. I would like, take me down to baby. It's like, it's like the Pope. <laughs> take me to baby town. That's so creepy. Uh, pictures are also off limits unless you get the oh. explicit written consent of the people in the picture. But I think there's a loophole. If you look for unsuspecting people in the background that you want pictures of. You know what I'm saying? You're like, yeah, let's all get together. No, to the right. To the right. To the right. A little bit more. A little bit more. Yeah, perfect. And then you make sure that uh, hotties in the we background. We do that all the time anyway. <laughs> what? With clothes what? on. I I never been uh, never been I've never been kidding. caught doing I'm that. I'm kidding. <laughs> but that's that's the way to get around that loophole. So I just thought it would be interesting to bring up some of these ideas and the pictures of these people. Of course, it's blurred out. is pretty funny. It's all dudes running around and jumping off rocks with nothing on. Obviously, there you're not also allowed to have any <clears throat> sexual ac activity go on. This is basically just walking around with at your clues. With I like at your clothes. Dick, staying on this theme of nudity in a, in a way. How's your midsection feeling at the moment? I'm full. A little lower. Midsection? My stomach? A little lower. My private? There you go. No human organ is safe from micro microplastics, even testicles. Have you heard this news? First of all, do you know what a microplastic yeah. is? Microplastics are those little microscopic bits that come off from plastics from either tires uh, uh, emitting bits into the air that we breathe or from our plastic bottles or whatever. Mm -hmm. Plastics are now basically found in everyone's body, including the male testicle. I guess it wouldn't be the female testicle, though, would it? Researchers at the University of Mexico recently... Aren't there people born with both? Uh, well, I suppose there could be in very rare instances, so, but researchers at the, shout out to them. at the University of Mexico recently tested 70 samples of testicular tissue. 47 from dogs and 23 from humans. That makes no sense. Why odd numbers? Don't they usually come in pairs? Anyways, each one of them found microplastics. Every single one of them. Okay. So that means right now there's a probably a pretty good chance you and I got some microplastics down there. Yeah. Maybe that's where those unwanted engorgements come from. It's all the microplastics. Or maybe it's drinking all that Crystal Pepsi we did back in the 80s and oh, 90s. God. I'm already feeling it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, anyways, this is a problem, though, man. Microplastics, and it's not well, like... Well, yeah. I mean, I remember reading about it, and they were trying to say, like, the person who's going to make a buku money is the person who's going to develop a way to get the microplastics out of your body. Out of our body. Because I don't think at this point if we said, okay, we're going to eliminate plastics from the face of the earth right now. Okay. They're still There's still be. so many of them out there yeah. that... I mean, it's, I don't think it's a problem with an easy answer, but apparently them plastics find their way to your nuts. Well, they find your way throughout your entire body. Correct, which is why I don't know why they just decided to focus well, in on the nuts. They, An odd number they, of they nuts, They probably too. want to say that to scare people. Oh, maybe so, to get some attention. Yeah, I guess because if you're like, oh, it's found in the body, you'd say, sure. But if you say, it's, it's in found in your nuts. nuts. Like, you know what that means? That means... The study isn't the first to... Mutant I, babies. Uh, mutant plastic, ever-living babies. Mutant babies, man. You know, it's so hot. You know what man. I'm going it to... Is, it is really hard to do the show. Uh, you know what I would name my child if I knew that I had plastic in, inside Toxic there? Toxic Avenger. No. Aquafina. Aquafina? Thank yeah. you. Dasani. That was, Dasani, yes. Dasani. I had twin girls, Aquafina and Dasani. The study isn't the first... Uh, oh, my God. To identify microplastics in the human male reproductive system, but... It's the first one that has come out with 100% scientific, 
6 of 6, and 30 of 30, even in the semen samples. So this is 100% chance. So that's, that's, that's scary. It's not like, well, this is statistically probable that this will happen. No, right now we're saying it's probable you got it, you're nuts. Where, where do you think they got all the nuts from? The body there's form? A, there's, a kind of, there's a lot of guys. There, well, yeah, but I don't... Donate I, their body to science. I, I guess it was people that donated, right? But again, odd number. I only donate one of mine, not both. Well, people... Wouldn't you like to be real contrary like that? Yeah, they might have messed up the first one. You want a clean cut? Yeah. Do you think they cut them off or they leave them on when they're doing the samples? I don't know. Good they're question. The test. Yeah, it is a good question. Thank you for noticing how good that question was. The findings add to a growing list of studies finding microplastics throughout the human body, including livers, lungs... Oh, car- carotid, oh, carotid, carotid arteries, breast milk, and everyone's favorite, placenta. The organs that form to prove nutrients to growing fetuses. And of course, afterwards, a delicious snack, which we determined you can make jewelry out of or just have a snack on top of maybe a, a Triscuit. I don't know. I think I'm starting to hallucinate. It's so hot in here. Yeah, <laughs> oh I'm, trying to, I'm trying to find where we are. <laughs> Oh my God! Hopefully, hopefully oh, yeah. we make it the entire it. show. We hopefully, it. we make it the entire show here. Um, are you aware that the Mona Lisa? Do you know what the Mona Lisa is? First of all, do I need to tell you? Is what it that a is? microplastic in my nuts? No, it is not. Dang! Uh, I don't think we're after the fifty-five minute hour or mark. Otherwise, I would have a joke for that. But the Mona Lisa painting is now on display at the Louvre, right? Yeah, it's always been there, right? Right. They're yeah. now thinking that it could be moved. Oh my God. Moved from the Louvre. Yeah, good. They should. That place well, sucks. Yeah, I'd actually like to go. It's just a museum in Paris, in uh, Gay Paris, right? But what I guess most people don't realize is they go to the Louvre to see this, and everybody wants to see the Mona Lisa. Everybody's got to get a selfie with it, and there could be up to 20,000 people every single day viewing the Mona Lisa. So it can take hours and hours and hours for you to finally work your way up there to see a picture. So what they've decided to do move her to her own massive room because apparently right now she's just in with everything else and it just completely clogs up everything so they are moving her to her own room but you can throw stuff at her with uh, a proper right proper angle are people doing that right yeah don't they throw like like oil or something or milk and spaghetti they throw but i think it's covered in plastic like it's in behind a plastic thing so it really doesn't matter anyways But that's that's kind of interesting though. But I didn't realize that twenty thousand people every day. Yeah, Ro- Roger that. next door is getting pissed. Roger? Yeah. Who's Roger? He's a famous painter, but <laughs> no one cares about him because everyone's <gasps> waiting for Obviously. Mona. Roger the famous painter. Yeah, huh? Roger. Duh. Is this that's the very one? French name? Roger. Oh, he's the one that did uh, King Charles. Yeah. In red. Yeah. And your uh, your ex wife. Yeah. Right. That's the same painter that you commissioned. <laughs> Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Roger. For the memories. Uh, Dick, are you familiar with what poo plumes are? No, but I like the name already. Poo plume. It's Yeah, I think I've got your new nickname. Well, basically, there are trillions and trillions and trillions of microbes that are essentially, essentially quote, part of you. <laughs> okay? <laughs> but what happens, and a lot of them are harmless, but some of them can make them sick. And even though our Toilets do a great job of capturing and eliminating our waste. Rogue poo particles can still escape the bowl, especially if we don't shut the lid when we flush. So I got to ask you, do you shut the lid oh, before yeah. you flush? Oh, yeah. Man, I can't say that I'm consistent with that. I mean, I, I, I'm sure I do I, sometimes. Well, the only reason I do is out of habit growing up with uh, with sisters. Okay. So well, like, that's the seat, though. But this is the yeah, actual no, lid. So to what cover I did it up. is like I trained myself to make sure I close the whole thing because I don't forget to close seat the lid. Included, or but that's just pee. I know, but like it's just the way oh, I was I trained. Gotcha. And so I was like, anytime yeah. I use the restroom, and before I flush, I got to shut this thing. Well, they're saying when you flush that particles can whoosh up oh, in yeah. the air called poo. What I call them poo, poo plumes. plumes. Apparently, they first started to be uh, studied in 1976. I'm like, we're still studying this. How long does it take to figure out poo plumes come out of your toilet? The whole idea uh, was, is there something that's coming out of the toilet when you flush it if you don't keep the lid down? It's called a poo plume, like we just said, little droplets in the air. So how they uh, studied this is scientists placed Petri dishes around a toilet, flushed it multiple times, and looked to see if anything sprouted. Gross. (laughs) Sprouted? What's sprouting, Dick? (laughs) And sure enough, within six feet of the toilet, you had microbes that were growing 
because that is how far the droplets can span. And they say one of the yeah. things that's within it's crazy. that's within six feet of the toilet is usually your toothbrush. toothbrush. Yeah, I, know. I already know all this stuff. Toothbrush. You know all the stuff and you didn't bring it to air first? No, I just didn't think you were a disgusting piece of garbage. I think I, this is information I need to know yeah. about closing the toilet so I yeah. don't get poo plumes on my toothbrush. <sighs> Thanks a lot. I didn't realize you were so adept at this. I'll move on. Were you aware that Steven Seagal is facing, facing sanctions from the European Union after attending Russian President Vladimir Putin's inauguration in Moscow? I didn't know this. Uh, but apparently... The -the above-the-law actor, who has applauded Putin frequently in the past, had high praise for him uh, as his friend. And he's, I didn't realize, he's 71 years old. Not Putin. Yeah, Stephen Skull. Stephen Skull, 71 years old. Still looks a day, doesn't look a day over 25, by the way. Looks like he ate his 25-year-old self. (laughs) He kind of does. So. I know he'd been, and I know you're a big fan of watching his terrible, more recent movies. they're great. Yeah. But I didn't realize that apparently he is... uh, um, Huge Russian guy. Huge. Huge. But he's an American citizen. Huge. No, he's a he's dual, citizen. Now, he's dual citizenship. Yeah, yeah. Has now gone over and, and acquired citizenship yeah. in Russia. Interesting. I had no idea. But according to the Ukrainian news, uh, support of the former KGB agent could make him a target of sanctions uh, packaged being finalized by the, e- by the EU officials. It's not clear what any of those punishments might be. Well, I guess this is the end of him making good movies now, huh? Oh, well, probably making better ones now. Now he's above the law. Yeah, he says that uh, him and uh, they have an order of friendship, him and Putin. Yeah, he awarded it. So. And Seagal reportedly, de- I love how he reportedly declared himself 1 million percent Russian. You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of the, uh, was the office character going, I declare bankruptcy! <laughs> That's, not, so that's not really how it works. <laughs> well, you don't I, just declare yourself guy, 1 million percent Russian. It's interesting because you, you could tell with his career, that's where he made most of his movies post-2000. Mm-hmm. Was somewhere in Russia. Like, you know, it might have been fallen states, might have been Ukraine, might have been all this kind of stuff. And then you could tell it was getting more because I think he was dating a Russian girl. Of course he was. Who was somehow tied to Putin. Putin. His beard is oddly dark. I don't know if you've seen it. I, I imagine that's not natural, but he's 71 years old, and his oh, beard yeah. and hair it's, is like jet it, black. Yeah, it's blacker than the night. And <laughs> yeah, it, this guy's hilarious to me, because but just because you don't really know the full truths of what they're saying about him. Because I think at one point he was there to train, mm-hmm. you know, his Aikido. He's like, so they hired him to be a trainer. Right. And then, then he became some type of military uh, uh, specialist. And then it sounds like, is he in the army, the Russian army? Like, or is he just kind of like a celebrity that's just ha- going on tour? I don't know. And then it became like, oh, he's like best friends with Putin, and that's the girl he's dating is somehow related to Putin or something. Well, one thing's for sure. He's one million percent Well, Russian. that's what I'm saying. One like, he's, million percent. He's in it. I love it. I guess so. Well, he could be facing some sanctions. All right, this is the quick hit here at the end of the show, Dick. We have made it. Whew. The scorcher of an episode. We have made it. Were you aware of what the poltergeist curse is? No. This is interesting. So the poltergeist curse is curse is something that was given to, um, I guess, the cast members uh, of, of the people who made the movie Poltergeist. <clears throat> Excuse me. Four cast members actually died during and soon after the filming of the series. And, of course, that was the, the majority of the fuel for the alleged curse stems from these deaths. In total, the four cast members died during and soon after the filming of the series. Two of these tragic deaths were highly un- unexpected and puzzling, leading many fans to speculate on the trilogy's eerie implications. It's a pretty interesting article, but Heather O'Rourke, Dominic Dunn, Julian Beck, Will Sampson, that is a lot of people in and around one singular movie dying and especially dying in weird ways so it is well with the strangest thing was like the people who did die it wasn't just like oh this guy got drunk because he's a drunk and drove mm-hmm. off a cliff it's like the young girl died mm-hmm. and like, one of them had a a congenital intestinal abnormality kind of strange yeah and then like the most of the young people died it wasn't right right it's not like these were ancient people yeah yeah it says uh, I like it, somebody. I, uh, da, 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 I think somebody killed somebody else though too. 
November, uh, he showed up at Dunn's house pleading for her to take him back when she refused. Whitney grabbed Dunn's neck, choked her till she was unconscious, and left her. Okay, so somebody killed somebody, too. So this was just a squabble on set. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Well, you may want to check it out. It's a pretty interesting article and a pretty interesting um, concept known as the Poltergeist Cursed. Curse, not cursed. Curse. Mm -hmm. Okay, man, I think we made it barely. Uh, I'm sweating. Need to go get a drink uh, of water. Sorry, onesies. This was uh, it was uh, this was an interesting one. I'm kind of like zoned out. I think I need to talk to my buddy, that rich dude. I'm like, you got anything for me? Oh, uh, uh, Brian Johnson. Yeah, I'm sure he's got a few things for you. I'll swap some blood. I just need some blood, man. Yeah. Go get a transfusion from him. All right, onesies. We'll see you guys later. Don't forget every Wednesday at 10 a.m. or on YouTube, Facebook. Look up Lone Star Community Radio, and then of course on podcasts, just look up Audience of One Show. And you can email us at any time at audience one show at gmail.com. Thanks for tuning in. Think about subscribing. Think about donating. Just visit us online at IRLoneStar.com. Share the show. Share the show. Bye, onesies. Bye.